Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a teaching on advanced price signatures and how we can keep them as simple as possible to improve our trading. So today's agenda, we are going to be discussing key opening prices and why that is significant to our trading, manipulation, how to identify this manipulation and where does this manipulation occur, engineered liquidity, how to identify engineered liquidity, how to utilize it to build a bias, build a narrative to assist us in our targeting, our trading as a whole, SMTs, the 930 fair value gap, and breakaway gaps. So the main three key opening prices that we wanna be aware of and have in our toolkit is Sunday opening price, midnight opening price, and 9.30 a.m. Eastern time opening price. We're going to utilize this in this video and I utilize these levels every day in my trading, every week in my trading, getting prepared for a week when I'm looking for entries. These opening prices are extremely important to our outlook on the market. So let's start to build a framework and understand the importance of these key opening prices. When we are bullish, we want to see manipulation occur below Sunday's opening price. We want to see manipulation occur below midnight's opening price. And as you can guess, and as you can see here, we want to see that manipulation take place below 930's opening price. And if we reverse the logic for when we are in a bearish scenario, we want to see manipulation occur above Sunday's open, above midnight's open, and above 930's opening price. So now that we understand the key opening prices, and where we look for that manipulation, let's lay the framework and understand what manipulation actually is. It is a liquidity sweep and or delivery to a PDRA. So combining what we discussed with the key opening prices and what we just laid as a framework for the manipulation, when we are bullish, we want to see that liquidity sweep and or delivery to that discount PDRA take place below key opening prices. And when we are bearish, we want to see that liquidity sweep or delivery to a premium PD array take place above key opening prices. So now I want to begin to discuss engineered liquidity. We're going to be discussing different ways to identify this engineered liquidity and how we can utilize it in our trading and in our building of a narrative in different ways. As you can see here with that blue font, we are going to be starting this discussion with engineered liquidity, talking about the manipulation leg. So what is engineered liquidity during the manipulation leg? Liquidity pools that the algorithm builds before the manipulation occurs. So what are some different ways to identify this engineered liquidity during the manipulation leg? When we have multiple session liquidity pools in close proximity, when we have a higher time frame inefficiency coupled with a lower time frame liquidity pool, when we have pre 930 open relative equal highs or relative equal lows on the lower time frame, we want to see these different types of engineered liquidity pools swept before our reversal takes place. And as a final note about this, there are plenty more ways to identify engineered liquidity pools. This is just going to be the introduction to really identify them during the manipulation leg and as you will see during the distribution leg as well that we will cover in separate teachings. So let's refine that logic for when we are bullish during the manipulation leg. We want to see multiple session lows in close proximity. We want to see higher time frame discount inefficiencies in close proximity to lower time frame sell side liquidity pools. And we want to see pre 930 open relative equal lows on those lower time frames. And reversing it when we are bearish during the manipulation leg. We want to see multiple session highs in close proximity. We want to see higher time frame premium inefficiencies close to lower time frame buy side liquidity pools. And we want to see pre 930 open relative equal highs on the lower time frame. So what is the definitional framework for engineered liquidity during the distribution leg or for targeting purposes? They are liquidity pools that the algorithm builds to target after the reversal or the manipulation has already occurred. So for the distribution leg, when we are bullish, we wanna see multiple session highs in close proximity for targeting purposes. We wanna see higher time frame premium inefficiencies in close proximity to lower time frame buy side liquidity pools for targeting purposes. And we wanna see pre 930 open relative equal highs on the lower time frame for targeting purposes. And we do not want to see this engineer liquidity swept before the reversal takes place. 
because we want to see as much engineered liquidity left for us to target. And when we are bearish during the distribution leg, we want to see multiple session lows in close proximity. We want to see higher time frame discount inefficiencies coupled with lower time frame sell side liquidity pools. We want to see pre 930 open relative equal lows on the lower time frame. So now let's transition into some charts and talk about the concepts that we've discussed thus far in this teaching, as well as some of the more advanced signatures as we continue to build our narrative for some of the price action that occurred today and this week. So you're looking at NASDAQ's daily chart, and I want to discuss first why this daily BISI or fair value gap high at 19 thousand four hundred forty seven point five was a high probability liquidity pool or in other words price was going to gravitate towards there this goes back to what we discussed during the first portion of this teaching one form of engineered liquidity is higher time frame inefficiency that is also lower time frame liquidity so if we have this higher time frame or daily fair value gap and focus on the high of this fair value gap, we wanna copy that down as we do our top-down analysis and see if there's also liquidity pools that are exactly this daily fair value gap high, or there's lower time frame lows or relative equal lows, liquidity pools in close proximity to this higher time frame inefficiency. So again, focus on this daily fair value gap high. That level is 19447.5. So let's go to the four hour chart. And what do we see? This swing low here on the four hour chart is also that daily fair value gap high that we just discussed so we are seeing higher time frame inefficiency and lower time frame liquidity pool this is a high probability liquidity pool so if we want to play this targeting down regardless of if we think price is going to continue and drop lower or reverse we know that when we get a setup this liquidity pool is very very high probability to deliver to now were we looking for a continuation lower today no we were not we were looking for a potential bounce out of here okay but really focus on the fact there when we have a higher time frame inefficiency and a lower time frame liquidity pool so i mentioned and i won't go into complete bias in this video but I did mention that we weren't looking for lower prices. I was not looking for lower prices this morning. We wanted to see if this was gonna be manipulation and then see if we got a reversal or a long setup to target buy side liquidity. So you can see that we did bounce here. Okay, we're gonna talk about how we got there on the lower timeframes. But before we did in fact get down to 19447.5, we need to discuss some other signatures that I look for before that manipulation even takes place. So how can I gauge strength in the market? What signatures am I looking for? Yes, I wanna see that low ran, but we have this four hour fair value gap here. I wanna see this remain as a breakaway gap because what is that telling me? How am I internalizing that signature? That's the algorithm telling me it doesn't care that there's this four hour inefficiency down here. It's in a hurry to get somewhere else. Okay, so if I see price deliver and this manipulation occur, again, running this four hour swing low, which is also the daily fair value gap high, and then we start to see the reversal signatures after the manipulation has taken place when failing to reach this fair value gap, classifying it as a breakaway gap, that is extreme strength to me. You wanna see when we are bullish, discount inefficiencies remain open to confirm to you that the market is strong. And if we go down to the one hour chart, we can really start to refine some of the things that we discussed in this video thus far. We're using the same logic. So you still see this is an hourly swing low and it's the same logic. It's still the daily fair value gap high. And look below, we have one BISI here that we wanna see remain as a breakaway gap. And we have this one below as well, just like the four hour chart, but this is just to reinforce those concepts that I just discussed, right? These should be breakaway gaps because of the higher time frame inefficiency. That's what you want to see for your signatures of strength. And then you identify the reversal signatures that we are going to get to, of course. So what else did we discuss at the start of today's lesson? We need to identify our key opening prices. And what do we look for when we are bullish in relation to those key opening prices? We wanna see manipulation occur below those key opening prices. And we wanna see those long setups or reversal signatures occur below those key opening prices. So what are those key opening prices? Sunday's open and midnight's open, okay? Where is that daily busy high and four hour swing low residing? Below Sunday open, below midnight open, 
okay? And even coming into this week, which I discussed a little bit in my YouTube video yesterday, we had these two session lows in close proximity to each other below Sunday opening price, which is what we were watching to start the week. So if we do, especially in the first half of the week, start to see price gravitate down towards here, I'm not only monitoring this as a strong draw on liquidity on top of the daily busy high that we've discussed, but I'm also really monitoring to see if we get a reversal down here and that this is the manipulation leg for the weekly candle. So as you can see here on NASDAQ, we already purged with Monday session where my cursor is. This is Monday session. We had already purged last Friday's low and last Thursday's low. Okay. If we go to the S and P's hourly chart, what do we see? This is last Friday's low and last Thursday's low. Did we purge those yet? No. So we have an SMT at the lows. Okay. So especially if we see manipulation occur in relation to what we discussed on NASDAQ, but ES as well, and we see those SMTs at the lows hold, then we are really, really seeing strength and a turning point back to buy side in the market. And what else did we discuss during the first portion of this video? After the manipulation takes place, we want to see as much engineered liquidity get left for us to target, or in other words, confluence for us to go back up. Okay, so just like NASDAQ, and this is uh, replay mode, just so you guys can see where we were before 9.30 open. This is 7 p.m. hourly candle, right? We see session highs in close proximity. Yesterday's lunch high and today's London high. See how London brought it just short? So what was London high utilized to do? Engineer that buy side liquidity. And then as we'll see, and as I'm sure you guys saw today watching the markets on your own, we did have that manipulation lower before reversing back upwards. And just like NASDAQ, where is that manipulation going to take place? Below Sunday open, below midnight open, and we will look on the lower time frame below 930 open as well. We had some beautiful, beautiful price delivery today. So now we are down on the one minute chart and let's take a look at what occurs upon 930 open. For the best long setup, we want to see that daily busy high, which is copied here at 19447.5, get ran to serve as our manipulation. Where would that manipulation be taking place? Also below 930 opening price, below midnight opening price, below Sunday opening price. So everything's checking out. We just need to see that manipulation ran in our reversal signatures. Now also note this, I mentioned in the start of this video, we have pre 930 open relative equal lows that we want to see ran before reversing when we are bullish. Okay, so see how we have these one minute relative equal lows that's also falling short of this higher time frame inefficiency right before 930 open. That is what you want to see if you're looking for a long setup right before 930. Why? Because this is going to convince traders that this is strong support right before 930 open on top of the fact that they're going to be looking at this leg down and saying, I missed out. It's going to go lower and we're going to break out below these lows, below this support, double bottom, whatever you want to call it. But we know that this is just manipulation to trap those shorts. And then we see our reversal signatures back to buy side. Okay. So I think I failed to mention on NASDAQ. Yeah. So ES, we left the hourly previous day lunch high and London relative equal highs, right? That's what we want to see for targeting after the manipulation at the lows has taken place. And of course, by extension of that logic, if ES is going to go up there, we want to see NASDAQ get up to London high as well. So as you'll see on the one minute chart here, this is what we were targeting for NASDAQ, right? That's what you'd want to see for a draw on liquidity. So again, we see the reversal signatures. What are these first initial clues? Okay. SMT right here into what a random area? No, the daily busy high and it's running that four hour swing low. So multiple things are occurring here. Okay. And this is the type of reaction you want to see from a key level. SMT and wick and strong expansion away. Okay. Now what's another beautiful, beautiful signature for a reversal, a closure above a 930 fair value gap that occurs right at 950, right at the start of the 950 macro. We close above the 930 fair value gap. Once this occurs, we've spoken about this in this channel before we see it every single day in the markets virtually to some degree. We talk about it within our private community every single day, and it's just beautiful. Once we get this close above the 930 fair value gap, you want to see this busy remain unfilled. You want to see it, in other words, function as a breakaway gap. That is a signature of strength, just like we were discussing on the higher time frames. Okay, breakaway gaps and being able to identify them and anticipate them before they even occur are extremely, extremely powerful. And now we see this here, this close above. 
open on the next candle. Low, if you look at the top of the screen while I hover over this candle, that is 19505.25. If I click the 930 fair value gap, that is 19505.25. Exact to the tick. It closes above, delivers to the 930 fair value gap, and uses it as a smoke screen, which is the terminology we've discussed in the previous teaching on this channel. It uses that 930 fair value gap as a smoke screen and doesn't want to go down to this breakaway gap. Right? The algorithm wants to just hit this and go higher and reach for higher prices. Okay, so after we see all the manipulation occur with everything that we've discussed um, throughout this video and the first portion of it with the presentation, but also on the higher time frames, we look for these signatures on the lower time frame. So if I go to S and P as well, right, we see last Friday's low right here. Okay, last Friday's low. What do we see and notice about that there? Does it get purged? No right and what did we discuss already that's what you want to see for a reversal back to buy side and as a reminder why do you want to see es fail to get down to last friday's low because if we go back to the higher time frames we saw that nasdaq purged both of these daily lows while s p failed to so what does that mean you're seeing an smt occur Okay, and what we've also discussed on this channel in relation to higher time frame SMTs, those higher time frame SMTs are going to occur below midnight and below Sunday open. So see how important those key opening prices are. And if we go back to NASDAQ's one minute chart, where are we targeting? We already discussed this, London high for NAS, but how am I looking at this liquidity pool here as well, right? And again, you can just call this terminology, but it's the way I'm internalizing this, right? It's building a narrative. It's understanding that, yes, we want to see London high get delivered to. So we want to see as much buy side liquidity get built up before delivering there. That's added confluence. That is narrative, right? So after the manipulation takes place, after you see the reversal signatures back up, closure above the 930 fair value gap, closure above another significant inefficiency like the New Day opening gap, you want to see that expansion to your buy side targets. And in other words, the engineered liquidity pool that we identified for our distribution leg. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're feeling overwhelmed with a lot of these concepts, just stick with it. I promise you, as long as you stick with it and really try your best to study and learn and to keep showing up, you will improve. It's just a matter of time. You just have to keep showing up and trying to learn, okay? And once you get in the groove and can start to see these signatures and you know expect what you want to see from the market, for example, the breakaway gap not getting returned to, it's really, really beautiful. And then you just have to be patient and wait for the setup. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have more teachings like this in the future, but this turning point down here was some of the best delivery I saw definitely this week so far. I know it's only Tuesday, but in a while, this was some of my favorite delivery, not only on the one minute chart here, but in relation to the time frames that we discussed leading into today's session as well. So again, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys want to join my Discord, it will be in the description of this video. And of course, as well as the description of my channel. I will talk with everyone soon and good luck and good trading.